Pete Zielinski with Modern Machine Shop Magazine. I'm here with Steve Klein of Gardner Intelligence. Um, so I'm the writer, Steve's the researcher. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about lights out machining. I think that lights out machining is a very important development in metalworking, um, more important than we appreciate. Uh, there have always been some facilities that were capable of running lights out, running unattended for an extended period of time through the nighttime hours. It is becoming more common now, a lot more common. There is process discipline. Um, you know, the, the move years ago toward lean manufacturing was sort of the beginning of this. Um, and then there is greater use of and greater confidence in unattended machining, thanks to uh, automation technology becoming uh, more economical, more accessible. And then the piece that is the most recent is uh, machine monitoring. I say all that because um, you've, you've heard and read me talk about that and you've looked at our Top Shops data and you find um, some, some conclusions in that data that sort of validate that picture. Um, so first, Top Shops. Uh, what is our Top Shops survey? Where does this data come from? What's that all about? Yeah, so Top Shops is Modern Machine Shop's annual benchmarking survey that Gardner Intelligence conducts for Modern Machine Shop. And every year, shops uh, answer a whole range of questions on their machining practices, the machine technology they have, HR practices, business strategies. There's about 30 numerical questions that we ask and then a couple hundred yes or no type questions that we ask as well. Uh, and then we score shops on those questions and determine that the top 20% of scores are top shops for that year. And then we compare them to the other 80% of shops. And one of the valuable things shops get out of that is a customized report for them that shows uh, where they're strong on which metrics they're doing really well, where they're sort of in the middle of the pack and where they have areas for improvement. And over the last nine years, we've had more than 3,000 unique shops participate in that survey. And so um, another value that, that you're realizing, that we're realizing, is the ability to look at that body of data and find correlations that tell us things, particularly around, you've been looking at the effect of different variables on profit margin, and um, it, it, it speaks to what we're talking about here. Yeah, so uh, as soon as I read your column, I, I instantly said I can go to the, the Top Shops data and I bet I can find something that kind of verifies uh, what you were seeing anecdotally over the years in shops. And when we look at improvement methodology, we ask about 16 different improvement methodologies in the survey. And so I wanted to see if a shop is using any one of those 16 and what is their profit margin versus the shops that aren't using an improvement methodology. And in the chart we're looking at here, we have about 1,100 shops that have either answered yes to having an improvement methodology or no, I don't do any one of those. 16, and it's about 85% of them that have an improvement methodology and about 15% that don't. But we see a pretty stark difference in the profit margin and that the shops that have an improvement methodology have a median profit margin represented by the orange line on the chart of 5% versus those that don't have an improvement methodology of just 1%. So a fairly significant difference. And in looking at all the data, this really seemed to be the foundational point in the three developments that you were talking about, that it had the biggest difference in profit margin. So if we, if we accept improvement methodology as a basis, and then we add to that shops that are doing unattended machining, thanks to automation technology, so what further incremental impact does that have? Yeah, so it was really interesting when we layered on unattended machining to the improvement methodology. One of the things that we saw is that when you aren't doing an improvement methodology, those 15% of shops that weren't, they're very unlikely to do unattended machining. And the addition of unattended machining for the few that did it had virtually no impact on their profit margin. Basically, everybody stayed at a zero to 1% profit margin. So it was really the combination of the two things, an improvement methodology and unattended machining, that provided the difference. And when we look at the chart here, we see that there's still a difference uh, in those shops that 
uh, have an improvement methodology but don't do unattended machining versus those that do. So the ones that don't do unattended machining, their profit margin stayed at 5%, but the ones that do unattended machining, their profit margin jumps by three percentage points up to 8%, so almost a 50% increase in their profit margin by adding unattended machining on top of their improvement methodology. Okay, so then we're gonna we're gonna keep on laddering on the variables then. So the next step is machine monitoring. So how does the graph we're looking at now show even more profit margin gain as a result of adding machine monitoring? So it's, it's really interesting when you add that on top of it. We're gonna leave out the shops that don't do uh, an improvement methodology here because there's so few of them that don't do an improvement method methodology, but somehow do unattended machining or a machine monitoring system. It's just yeah. very uncommon practice. So if we look at all the shops that do an improvement methodology, we had about 750. And if we start with those that don't uh, do unattended machining and don't do machine monitoring, we see that their profit margin is about 4%. So actually a little less than all the shops that have an improvement methodology of 5%. So some of that improvement methodology profit margin that we saw of 5%, we know is coming from these other factors of unattended machining and machine monitoring. And then we can move to shops that do an improvement methodology, don't do unattended machining, but have machine uh, monitoring systems. Mm -hmm. And we see a little bit of an improvement in profit margin from 4% to 6%. But we notice that there's relatively few shops that do that, that are able to skip sort of the second step mm -hmm. in the three developments of unattended machining. It's really rare to go from improvement methodology to machine condition monitoring. And then we can look at those shops that have an improvement methodology and do practice unattended machining, but don't do machine condition monitoring or machine monitoring in general. And we do see a bit of an improvement in the profit margin there, up from 6% to 7%. So you're better off doing an improvement methodology in unattended machining and not machine monitoring than having an improvement methodology and not unattended machine or not unattended machining and machine monitoring right there's sort of a, a order that these things need to be done mm. but the best performance came from the shops that have an improvement methodology have layered on unattended machining and then have layered on on top of that a machine monitoring system and their profit margin jumps to 9% mm -hmm. and so it's really interesting if we think about that middle step of unattended machining right if you don't do it and you're doing the other two things your profit margin is 6%. Mm -hmm. But if you have the middle step of unattended machining and are doing the other two things, your profit margin jumps up to 9%. Yeah. So, you know, 50% increase. And so one of the things I saw in the data that helped us see the order of these is that the difference in profit margin of improvement methodology or not was 4%. The difference in profit margin of unattended machining or not was about 3%. And then the, um, the difference in profit margin between machine monitoring and not was about 2%. Yeah. So each one of these layers on this extra level of profit margin. Lights out machining, it is a journey. There are steps on that journey and the steps are undertaken in a specific order. But if, if profit margin is a proxy for success, which I think we could argue it's a, it's a pretty good proxy, <laughs> then uh, the potential value of following those steps toward getting to an effective, reliable, lights out machining process, um, the value is there, the value is measurable, we can see it in our data. Yeah. And I, I think there's lots of other things we can correlate with profit margin as well. And so hopefully we'll be sharing more of that with you as we come across more interesting topics in your columns. Very cool. Stay tuned.